Welcome. So this is actually episode 6 of Laravel 6 Advanced. So I just finished recording the episode, but I figured if I did a quick intro, I might help everybody know what we're actually going to be building. And here it is. So this may seem very simple at first, but check this out. Using pipelines, we've implemented an entire way to filter. What if I only wanted active? Imagine that these zeros and ones are active and inactive. Well, we can add an active equals one. And now check it out, only active. What if I say active equals zero? Then of course we get that. What if we wanted to sort this? Well, we can add another one. We'll say sort equals, let's do it in ascending order. And check this out. Now it's an alphabetical order, but notice that active is still zero. And on top of that, we've actually got pagination. So we've got different pages. And as you notice, of course, everything remains the same. So how cool is that? So stick around and I'll show you how to build this from scratch. Cue intro. Welcome back. So in this episode, we're going to be talking about pipelines. Now, as a very quick aside, a pipeline is actually a design pattern found in object oriented programming. Now, luckily for us, Laravel actually ships with an implementation of pipeline. So we don't actually have to implement it from scratch. We can simply just use it. However, I'm in the Laravel documentations. And if I type in pipeline or pipelines, truthfully, nothing comes up. And this is because pipelines is one of those not really public facing things about Laravel. Now, as you get deeper and deeper in your learning of Laravel, you can leverage some of the things that Laravel actually uses internally to your advantage in your application. And pipelines is one of those things. So up front, let's take a couple of minutes to explore how pipelines are actually used in the Laravel framework. Then let's do something very, very cool with a real world example of filtering posts. And this is something that can be implemented in many different ways, but a pipeline is a perfect example of how to actually do it. So let's jump right to it. I have a fresh installation here of Laravel. The only thing I've done is set up a database behind the scenes and I set up from posts for the example that we're going to be working with today. But I'll go through all of that when the time comes. So let's start right off the bat. What is a pipeline? So a pipeline, imagine, is as if you were putting together pipes and each pipe could be a straight pipe. Maybe it could be a bent pipe, a 90 degree, a 45 elbow, or maybe it could end and you can hook up a hose to it. So a pipeline, imagine it as a real pipe. So how does that translate into code? Well, in code, a lot of times you'll have steps. So something comes in and we need to take the necessary steps to get it ready for its final destination. And that's what pipelines help you do. So let's explore middleware. We've talked about middleware in the channel before. Definitely check out the lesson on how to create middlewares. We're more interested about how it actually works. So if we go inside the apps directory, inside the HTTP directory, we have our middleware. When your request comes in, it runs through a series of tasks and it's either a pass or fail kind of situation. It either throws an exception or it handles it in a particular way. Now these middleware here are actually registered in a kernel. So to find the kernel, this is the one we're looking for. There are two kernels in Laravel. One is for console and one is for HTTP requests. We are talking about HTTP requests. So this is the kernel that you're looking at. So here it is. This right here is basically a pipeline. So as your request comes in, there's going to be a certain number of steps that the request goes through. We see here five of those. Now, just as a quick aside, what are some of these? Well, for example, it checks if the application is in maintenance mode. And if it is, let's actually check out what it does. Now, when we go into this check for maintenance, well, there's nothing here. However, there is an actual check for maintenance that is inside the vendor directory. So when we take a look at this, we get to the handle method. Every single step needs to have this handle method and the handle method will accept a request and next. And next is just simply the next pipe. So we are passing it the next pipe. So when you're ready, you say something like, okay, return the next pipe and you pass on the request. So that's the way it works. You'll accept a request and you'll accept the next step. You'll do what you need to do in this particular step 
And when you're ready, you either throw an exception or you go on to the next step until you get to the end and there's no more steps at that point. So we see here that what it does is it throws a maintenance mode exception. So it runs through the entire application and if it determines that the app is down for maintenance and we can actually dive into what this is, but basically what it does is it actually adds a small hidden file in the application that tells Laravel that the application is down for maintenance. That's just the way it works. A little bit outside of scope of this lesson, but in here it actually goes in and you see tries to find this file in the storage path and if it does find it, it's going to be inside framework and down, then of course the application is in down mode. If not, then this, notice that this is actually outside of this if statement. So if the application is down for maintenance, it'll perform this. Otherwise, here it is. We are just returning the next step in the request. So where do you see pipeline? Well, so far we haven't seen pipeline anywhere in this. And the reason for that, we need to dive a little bit deeper into how middleware are actually applied. So let's go back to the kernel class and we see that this kernel class actually extends HTTP kernel. That is just an alias for Illuminate Foundation HTTP kernel. Let's jump into this class and this is the true implementation of the kernel class. So now if we take a look right off the bat, right up here, we see that we have this pipeline. So there we go. We finally actually see some pipeline action. So let me actually skip ahead to send request through the router. So the way that it works is that the request comes in and then Laravel tries to go ahead and run the entire request through every single registered middleware and then it actually dispatches to the router. So we know where we're actually going to be going. So we see this here, new pipeline. So to the pipeline, we pass the application and then we send the request through the pipes. Now, it does do a quick check here because there is a should skip middleware. And if that's turned off, then of course, it's just going to be empty. Now, notice that this is just an array. So the through method accepts an array and the array is built up using this middleware. Or of course, if it's skipped, then it's just an empty array. Then we actually just go ahead and dispatch to the router. So that's the way it works. Now we can keep going deeper and deeper into the foundation of Laravel, but let's explore the example. And I think that this will drive the point home. Let me close everything up and let me show you what I've set up for this example. I have this test project here, and these are just titles of posts and then a column of whether they are active or not. So all I have done is there is a create posts migration that just simply has a string of title and we have a small integer of active. So I do have a post factory. And if we pull that up, all I have is just a title with a faker sentence of two words. And then we have a random integer of zero or one. It will just randomly generate an active or inactive post. Okay. Then I do have a post controller, but it's not doing much right now. It just fetches all of the posts and then it pulls open this post index view. Now this index view, all it has is just a simple HTML table. And then for each post, we actually just have a row. Very, very simple setup. I didn't want to bore you with the setup for this, but at the end of the day, this is what we have is just a list. So the first thing I want to do is I want to show you how I would do this if we were not to use pipelines. So here's the way it would work. Let's say that I want to filter between active and inactive posts. So you may add a query string here and just say, okay, so I want everything where active equals one right now that doesn't do anything. So let's make it work. Let's go back to the post controller and let's do all of our work here. First of all, I can't just fetch all of the posts. I actually only need to fetch the ones if we have an actual active state. So here's what we could do. We could just grab a query and this will return a query builder for us so we can continue to chain things to it. We could say, okay, if the request has a key of active, in that case, I know I need to do something to my query. I would need to take my posts query and I would need to set a where statement and then we'll say, okay, we're active and we can set that equal to whatever was passed in from the request. So if one was passed in, this would be equal to one. And then at the end, I would need to actually fetch 
my posts from the database, right? So I need to call the get method on it. I do need to save this because I do now have a collection. So we'll save that to posts. And now if we hit refresh, there we go. We now have all posts that are equal to one. Now, of course, if I hit zero on this, then we get zero. And if I hit something that doesn't exist like two, then of course we just get nothing. All right, fair enough. But now let's take it to the next level. What if I wanted to sort by title? So maybe I would think of something like, okay, and I want to sort ascending. Okay. But that of course doesn't work. We'll have to repeat this. Bear with me. Let's do it one more time. So we'll say sort, and now we need to do an order by, right? All basic Laravel stuff. So we need to do an order by on the title column and we'll set it to whatever sort is. Okay. Does that work? Yep. That works. And of course we could say, okay, give me in descending order. And we see we have V coming back up in alphabetical reverse order. Great. But as you can tell, this is probably going to break very, very quickly. So in comes pipeline. Let's go ahead and refactor this code to use pipeline instead. We can use the underlying pipeline implementation that ships with Laravel. And this is going to save us a ton of time. So here's what I'm thinking. Let's create some filters for ourselves. And of course, a filter would basically be this is one filter. This would be one filter. So in my app, let's go ahead and create a new directory and we'll call it query filters. And then inside of query filters, let's have a new PHP class and let's start with this very first one of active. So I want the name of the class to match what I want to actually use in my query string. So we'll say active and inside of this active one, we'll start with just one, but of course, eventually we'll have a nice repeatable pattern that we can easily add a bunch of filters to and even reuse our filters. So what do we need active to do? Well, of course we need active to receive the query. So how do we do that? What is the method that needs to be inside active? Well, if you remember, you need to have a public function with the name of handle. And this is what's going to be called through the pipeline. So the handle method will accept the request next. As you remember, next is what we need to call when we are done with this particular filter. Now to keep it consistent with Laravel, let's go ahead and actually make sure that this is a closure and we can actually import this at the top if we want to like so that way is nice and clean. So we want to make sure that next is a closure because at the end of this all, we're going to have to do something like query, take next and pass through the request. That's how every single middleware ends. And that's because of pipelines. So we need to follow this same convention. So eventually we have to do that. So how do we actually handle that? Well, we're going to just return next if, well, if it doesn't have the keyword active in the request. So we can do a very similar check as we did here except that it's going to be reversed, right? We're not checking if it has the key. We're checking if it doesn't have the key. So if the request that is being passed in does not have a key of active, in that case, we need to go ahead and just move on to the next filter, whatever that is. However, if we get to this line here, it means that there is an active. And what I mean by that, again, just to review, is that we have a query string by the key of active. We could do just a sort and not have active and that will sort everything. But of course you see that we have zeros and ones. So we don't know when active is present on the request and when active is not. So that's why we need to check to make sure that we do in fact want to actually do any sort of filtering based upon active. So with that in mind, what do we need to do in here? We're going to return some sort of, well, we need a builder. So how do we get our builder into this active class? As it turns out, this right here is actually our builder because at this stage, this is our builder. So we are just simply returning our builder. We can save this to a variable just to keep it nice and clean. So we could say, okay, our builder is actually the next one. So with our builder at this point, how do we handle an active request? Well, here it is. We already wrote the code for that. So we can just simply grab this code and bring it over to active. All right. So that is going to be working for us. We need to hook all of this up and that's where the magic happens with 
pipelines. So what we need to do is the following. Let's create a new variable up here and we'll say, okay, so here is my pipeline and we can resolve that out of the container and we can request to get a pipeline. Now the pipeline that we're going to use is illuminate pipeline pipeline. So we'll go ahead and grab that class. Just make sure that you import that at the top, right? Again, we're using illuminate pipeline pipeline. So in my pipeline, the way that it works is we're going to send our query, right? That's what we want to send through this pipeline. I'm going to actually move this post query because that's what we want to send through this pipeline, right? We have this empty query that just fetches all of these posts. We want to run each of them through each of our query filters. So once we have that query sent through the pipeline, what are we going to do? Well, we need to run them through the following array of pipes. And of course, right now we just have the one. So we'll say app query filters, and then we'll grab active class. Again, we'll add these more as we have more filters. So once we're done sending it through, well, what do we need? Well, we just need to return whatever my query builder at the end of all this is. That's what I need. So we can actually call then return. Let's go ahead and return whatever you have. Okay, let's go ahead and die and dump just the pipeline just to stop the process so we can see what we actually have. Let's clean up our code. Let's go ahead and try to hit refresh and let's see what we get back. The first thing is we get a call to undefined method pipeline through. Eh, I misspelled it. Let's fix that. There we go. All right. And then we have, oh, whoops, another misspell, then return. I'm sure you saw that. There we go. All right. So we have a builder instance at this point. So to actually see it, why don't we actually perform the query? So let's go ahead and do a get right at the end of this. And let's see what we get. We get a collection of 100 posts. So that makes total sense because notice that active is not in the request. Let's go ahead and add active. So we'll say active equals, let's grab all of my active posts. And now we get 56. Notice how we have 56. So that is actually working. How cool is that? All right, so let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's create another query filter and then we'll do a big round of refactoring to actually make this really, really simple to do. So let's save this active one and let's do another one for the sorting. Remember, this was the other one that I had here is this sorting in descending order. So let's do sort. This stays the same, except that we are looking for sort this time. We'll get our builder. And then what do we need to do with our builder? Well, we already have it down here. So we'll go ahead and order by. We'll bring that into this one. And there we go. So what's the next step? Well, we need to add that to our pipelines. So let's add this right here as sort. And we can actually get rid of all of this all together. And all we would really need is just this pipeline get. Now pipeline doesn't quite make sense here. Really, this is my posts. So let's rename that to posts. And in that case, I can actually get rid of this all together. And as a matter of fact, I can actually inline this get right here. And we can get rid of that line. And that's starting to look much, much cleaner. All right, let's hit refresh. There we go. So descending order, ascending order. How awesome is that? How easy was it to implement this? Let's go to inactive only. We can get rid of one or both. And it still all works exactly the same. So pretty cool. All right, let's start a round of refactoring to make this even cleaner. I want to extract an abstract class that I can unload some of this logic because if you notice, we already starting to have some repetition and I definitely don't want that. So let's create an abstract class and we'll simply call it filter. So this is going to be the class that all of them will extend and let's start to unload some of this logic. So the first thing I want to do is actually let me make this an abstract class. There we go. And now we can come back here and say, okay, so this extends filter. And then let me copy that over to my active. And so here we are. So we know that we're going to have to check if this key exists every single time. So wouldn't it make a little bit more sense if we move that up to the parent? Sure, I think it does. So let me grab my entire handle method from one of the filters. And what I really want to do is I kind of want to just leave the handle method inside my abstract class and maybe just have an individual method 
maybe call it apply filters that actually handles the filtering part. So that way, whenever we regenerate one of these classes, I wouldn't have to do something like parent um, handle, right? And because then I would have to pass in the request and then I would have to pass in next. So that's still kind of dirty. I don't want to have to do that. Let me undo that. We'll come back and I think that this solution is going to be a little bit cleaner for us. So yes, we're going to do this, but then let's simply just delegate to a new method. So we'll return this. And again, it's a method that doesn't exist. We'll call it apply filter. And so to apply filter, we need to pass in a builder, right? That would make more sense. So I can actually move this line back up here. That way we could just have a filter and we don't have to worry about this next and request and all of that. So let's go ahead and make sure that anybody who extends this class follows the contract. We're going to be looking for a protected function called apply filter. And we know that this is going to accept a builder, but this of course needs to be abstract. Otherwise we're going to have to actually put a body and we're not interested in a body. We just want every single class to handle this for us. So, all right. So now that we have this, let's clean up this sort. So we're not going to have a handle method anymore. What we're going to have is a protected function of apply filter. And this already has our query. So all I need to do is this one line right here. So I'll bring the return builder order by and I can get rid of all of this. And here is my final sort filter. How much cleaner is that? So because we refactored some of this repetitive logic out of our actual filter, our filter itself is very, very clean. Let's do the same refactor in active. So again, we're going to need that apply filters function. And all it needs is this because we're getting our builder already. And I can get rid of all of this right here. So right now in my filter, I'm actually putting sort. So we need a way to do this dynamically. And again, we have this active class and we have this sort class. So we can actually use a Laravel provided helper function that is called class base name. Let me show you what it actually does very quickly. So right here, my handle method, I'm just going to do a die and dump and I'm going to show you what class base name will do for us. So I'm just going to pass in this at this stage. I'll hit refresh here and notice that it says active. So that's the very first class that we actually hit. It has a capital A and furthermore, imagine that the class actually had two names, something like something else, right? What would you want this to actually be? Well, something else should probably translate to something underscore else. So we need that to be in snake case. So let's actually extract this into its own method. So let's figure out a way to get our key from the class name. So let's create a new method of filter name. All right, so filter name, let's go ahead and actually add this method and it'll be protected. And filter name is going to return basically the same thing we had up there. So we'll say, give me, we can use str, that's Illuminate support str. And we do have a snake case right here. And then again, we're going to use that class base name again and just pass in this. Because we are extending, it will be sort and it will be active even though we're putting that in the parent class. Notice how when we actually tested it out, it didn't say filter, but it said active. So now up here we have filter name. And of course, down here, we can actually refactor this to use that exact same thing as well. So we'll go ahead and perform that refactor right here. And then over in the active class, we could do it right here. And then of course, we can actually replace active as well. All right, let's head back to the browser, hit refresh. Yep, everything is still working. All right, so that's working. Let's try sorting as well. We'll sort in descending order. Whoops, we must have made a mistake here. Ah, yes, of course. So this actually needs to be just replacing the key. So we still need to look in our request for the filter name. All right, so there we go. We could do ascending. Yep, that's all working. Awesome. So that's it. We basically have this query filtering working right where we need it. Let's do just one more quick round of refactor. And that is that right now, this is kind of cluttering my post controller. This is really a model thing. So why don't we actually refactor to use maybe a named constructor? So we could say post equals post and let's maybe call it all posts. 
It's going to be a name constructor. I'll grab all of this and let's cut it out completely. And let me go to my post model. And in my post model, let's create a new public static function called all posts. And in here, I'm simply going to return this right here. Now, I did have to import pipeline up here at the top. But there we go. So we have a nice working implementation using pipeline. So let's do one more filter just to finish everything up. And let's see how easy it is now that we have our final filtering. So let's do one for limit. What if I only want a max count of maybe 10 posts? Let me create a new filter here. We'll call it max count. And again, capital M and C will turn that into the snake case that we need. So that's going to work automatically for us. So we'll say the name is max count. So in here, we'll simply take as many as we have in our request. So that's it. Now we just need to register that as one of our filters. So we'll say max count. And let's go ahead and add that in. Now we'll say max underscore count equals maybe just just grab 10. And there we go. So we get 10. Now if we want 10 inactive ones, now we get 10 inactive ones. Same thing with the sending. It all works. How awesome is that? You may be wondering, well, is this like pagination? And it's definitely not like pagination. If you wanted to do pagination, we can tag that on top of all of this. So pagination would still work. Check this out. So if you know anything about pagination, you know that, of course, instead of getting something, you will actually have to paginate the results. And let's just keep it at five just for the sake of this example. When we hit refresh, now we have five posts. So one small caveat about this is the following. Let me go back to my index method. Let me actually go ahead and output out the links. So we'll say posts, links. So we can actually move between pages. And so when I go to page two, notice what happens to all of my query filters. I'm going to hit page two. Whoops, they're all gone. So that's not exactly what we want, because if we did that, now we have active posts. So we need a way of just telling Laravel to not erase whatever query filters I already have. I simply just want you to paginate. And it's a bit of a trick, but the way that it works is that we need to grab and actually append everything except the actual input. So we could use the appends method. And in here, we could simply say, OK, so grab all of my request inputs and then go ahead and fetch my links. So let me hit refresh. And notice down here, when I hover over to, notice that the address has everything that we need. So there we go. So now we have pagination and filtering all working thanks to pipelines. So pipelines just makes this easy and so clean. And again, if we needed another filter, you saw how easy it was to add yet another filter. All we need to do is just create a class and go ahead and add it. And because we have access to the actual query builder, right in here, we can perform any sort of stuff right from the builder. So this is what's going to allow us to actually have really advanced filtering built in. But again, it's all driven by pipeline. So pipeline, again, is a very, very useful object oriented design pattern and a great implementation that ships right with Laravel that we can tap into and use to our advantage in our applications. So that's going to complete our lesson today. As always, don't forget to subscribe and thanks for watching.